Good morning. I am Joe Nygaard Owens, pastor for digital ministry at the Cathedral. It is good to be with you this morning as we join together for morning prayer, Thursday, February 29th. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Let us pray. Remember us, O God, so we may not forget you this day. Direct our steps in discipleship and protect our souls in faith, that we may be steadfast in your service, because we are secure in your love, which we know in Jesus Christ, Savior of all. Amen. Our psalm for today comes from Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Our gospel reading for today comes from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm that has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five siblings, that he may warn them, so they will also not come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be con convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever found yourself unable to see? Perhaps creeping into the dark room of a sleeping child, narrowly avoiding stepping on toys or books strewn on the floor. 
Perhaps when walking down the stairs into a basement, frantically groping for the light switch to illuminate a neglected space. Perhaps in a cave, choosing to turn off battery-powered lights to be immersed in inky darkness. What about those times we are unable to see what's right in front of us, even when it's in plain sight? It happens all the time in my house with the detrius of living, piles of books, stacks of mail, or anything I place on the stairs for a family member to carry up. What about when we can't see what's truly important? even when it's right in front of us. In our gospel passage for today, the rich man is blind to the poor man, Lazarus, who lay at his gate. As one commentary notes, often there was a bench outside homes where the poor could wait for assistance. A beggar who sat at this bench at the gate could expect some sort of attention, especially from a feasting host and guests. And, as verse 19 says, this particular rich man feasted every day, meaning Lazarus was denied many times as the rich man repeatedly ignored the unwritten codes of honor. Further, verse 21 makes clear that Lazarus is not asking for much. Scraps and leftovers from the sumptuous feasting would have made all the difference. But the rich man was blind to the plight of Lazarus and others like him. It took the event of his death for the rich man to open his eyes. I don't know about you, but that is not the type of wake-up call I'm looking for. There are so many things in our world to be awake to. Systemic racism that strips people of dignity and opportunity. Horrific wars that kill the innocent. Climate change that is ravaging our world, natural disasters that destroy homes and livelihoods, pandemics and epidemics that kill indiscriminately. And that doesn't even begin to cover what each of us is individually facing. It is easy to become overwhelmed and suffer from compassion fatigue when contemplating the problems of the world. Compassion fatigue is real and it can paralyze us. To combat it, as cheesy as it is, I'm reminded of the phrase, think globally, act locally because that's exactly what the rich man missed. Yes, as a person of means, he was tasked both through the scriptures and social mores to care for those in need. In specific, he was tasked with tending to those right outside his gate. He couldn't see who was right in front of him. How do we open our eyes? How do we take up the task of caring for others? In these few moments this morning, I invite you to place your hand over your heart and deepen your breath. Feel your heart grow warm with compassion as you open yourself to God's boundless love. As your heart grows warm and you continue with your breath, allow a difficult situation from the world to enter your mind. Hold it before you. Feel the pain of those involved in the situation. What does life look like for them? What might they be feeling? What is their heart's desire? Though we may not be able to heal the world in an instant, 
we can extend our love and care. Imagine a person from your situation sitting outside your door. How can you stop and offer them hope and healing? How can you make what you see in your mind's eye a reality for even one person? For by doing that, you are doing the work of the gospel. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer using the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. In you, gracious God, the widowed find a carer, the orphan find a parent, the fearful find a friend. In you, the wounded find a healer, the penitent find a pardoner, the burdened find a counselor. In you, the miserly find a beggar, the despondent find a laughter maker, the legalist find a rule breaker. In you, Jesus Christ, we meet our maker and our match. And if some need to say, help me, and if some need to say, save me, and if some need to say, hold me, and if some need to say, forgive me, let these be said now in confidence by us. O Christ, in whose heart is both welcome and warning, say to us, do to us, reveal within us the things that will make us whole. And we will wait and we will praise you. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May the light of the Holy Spirit shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the face of Christ turn toward you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>